Uh, good morning, everybody. How are you? This is Enrique uh, of Spanish United. Uh, today we have a very special guest. I have Catherine Lee. She is the mayor of Alhambra, California. Um, would you care to introduce yourself, Mayor? Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. And uh, my name is Catherine Lee. I'm the city council member for District 1 in Alhambra, as well as the mayor of Alhambra. In Alhambra, we have five districts, so each district's uh, council member rotates in to become the mayor. So I was sworn in as the mayor on May 24th, 2021, and glad oh, awesome. to be here. Awesome, thank you. So so you recently became mayor not, not too long ago. That's correct. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, uh, one of the things that I wanted to discuss with you, as, as I had mentioned in the email, um, it's about uh, Chinese-Hispanic relations, Hispanophobia, and also sponsorship and uh, and promotion of better relations between both groups through uh, dialogue and exchange and, and cultural interactions, which I think is very, uh, very important. So I would like to uh, go with the first question with you, um, which has to do with uh, Chinese-Hispanic relations. Um, I, I go to I go to San Gabriel a lot and I see that the Chinese community over there in that area is very prosperous like all of that area of um, of San Gabriel is very nice and prosperous and whatever so I I wanted I wanted to ask ask you um, how would how would you describe our relations between um, Chinese and Hispanics in the San Gabriel area you know from from your personal experiences as mayor right okay um well alhambra is right next to san gabriel so um let me let me give you a little background where i my history so then the then you can understand my perspective i grew up in alhambra and we are immigrants from taiwan uh, back in the early uh in the 19 late 1970s mm -hmm. so when i came when my family came we lived in Monterey park for a while and we moved to alhambra uh just a, a year a few years after that so at that point, there weren't that many Asians. Uh, to, uh, people might be surprised. Um, mm. In my class, probably in my grade level, probably I could count maybe under 10 Asians. So the demographic of uh, Sangro Valley, or for that matter, Alhambra has changed tremendously in the 80s and 90s and so on and so forth. So uh, the city of Alhambra right now, um, which is, fairly similar to San Gabriel or maybe most cities in San Gabriel Valley, we have uh, about half of the populations uh, are uh, Asian Americans, mostly Chinese Americans, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of immigrants as well. And we have about 30% or so Hispanics and 10 to 15% white and, and so on and so forth. Um, so Alhambra is a city, a very diverse population and that's how I grew up. And I'm very used to that diversity. And that's why I chose to uh, stay in Alhambra after college. So um, so that said, that, that's basically the demographic of Alhambra. And I actually was a teacher um, as well with the Alhambra School District. So uh, I think you mentioned about cooperation or is that just, uh, should I just move on talk about? Yes, cooperation, yes. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna go to. The reason why I brought up my work experience as a teacher with the Alhambra School District is that um, in the classrooms, teachers have always been uh, really emphasizing cooperative learning for, for young kids. So that is a perfect time, perfect opportunity for our youth to grow up um, to learn how to work with each other across all racial divides. So, uh, so in the in the classroom, you can imagine is a microcosm of the demographic, general demographic Alhambra and Monterey Park. And so, my classroom was fairly similar to the demographic of Alhambra. It's a uh, very diverse. We also have some Middle Eastern families. And so that was that was a very good environment for our students, our youth to grow, grow up being able to cooperate and uh, have a conversations and in class and also on the playground. So, and I think Alhambra, city of Alhambra uh, to me right now, and I think because of the classroom environment that kids grew up and they are used to that diversity. And I feel that it got carried into the city as well. 
So, and I think for me, from my perspective as a teacher, um, having worked with students from all culture, all ethnic groups, I think the cooperation really have to start from when, uh, when we are young and learning to work with each other and get to know each other's culture. And at the end of the day, we're all the same people. Mm -hmm. We all have the same needs, correct? So, that is um, correct. Yeah, so I think, I think the, uh, the educators are the key people as well as administrators are the key people to instill that cooperation, the spirit of cooperation and the importance of respecting each other uh, regardless of our differences. And like I said, the kid's gonna find out after a fun event, they're just people, they all want the same thing. So, um, so I, I'm just really kind of, I think I'm very optimistic with that kind of approach. Um, cooperation from, from uh, residents when they're young and many of them choose to stay in, uh, to stay in Alhambra or the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. Yes, because, you know, I, I feel that it's very important that cooperation starts young. And I think that also helps in promoting uh, harmony, because one of the reasons why there is stigma against different people is because uh, people are not uh, used to interacting with other people. And uh, when, when people don't know each other or know about what they are, you know, you know, human nature, you know, causes us to... Uh, you know, to look at the other person as the other, instead of, like you said, you know, we all have the same needs and wants, whatever, you know, we're just different in different ways. So I think, I think it's very important that, uh, that it starts young. And also that uh, I also believe that uh, if there are cultural centers, like for example, for Hispanic people, that's something, one thing that I notice that every time I go to the San Gabriel Valley, Arcadia, Temple City, Monterey Park, et cetera, that there are cultural centers and community centers like for Asian people, which is open to everybody. But I noticed that, that there's a lot of investment and in, in resources into the people. And when, every time I go to like Hispanic areas, I see that there is a lack of, of, um, of resources and, and funding. And I myself yeah. as, as, a, um, as, a, as a civil activist and a founder of my own organization, one of the things that I'm trying to do is get sponsorship to try to establish uh, community centers in Hispanic areas. And I'm all, and I'm basing it on the, uh, and this, and the, and the San Gabriel uh, model, because from what, from what I see, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, juvenile delinquency is very low and crime is very low in those areas because you have not only a tight knit community, but you also have uh, centers and places where you know the kids can go and get tutoring and at the school programs you don't really see that in, in hispanic areas so mm -hmm. so yeah. that, that's 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 a concern you know and that's one of the reasons why i'm trying to get sponsors because i feel that uh, uh, the hispanic youth is very much at risk and since we are growing in large numbers uh, if we don't get them to start early and getting education, getting themselves in the right path per productive, per productively, it could it could cause uh, social and moral decay later later on. Yes, um, I I do have a few advice. Um, number one, um, the city council of each city has uh, at their discretion um, programs for the youth. And for example, for the city of Alhambra, which we're not alone, many cities have that, is the parks and recreation programs. And uh, many of the programs consist of after school, um, maybe after, after school programs, recreational, and it, it, it would not be a problem for the city council of that particular city to build in after school program to, for tutoring, for example. It also could be a private tutoring centers, but that will, uh, then the resident will have to pay a fee, of course. Mm. Many public schools um, have after school program as well. So in our district, we have uh, two programs. One is a higher fee, but one is uh, more affordable. So parents can send their children 
to those tutoring centers or after school program, which consists of recreation, also at least one hour homework time with some mm -hmm. tutoring involved. And those are the things that are free, um, generally uh, available to all the public. And so you have the city that has at their disposal available programs for help the youth. Um, and also the school district as well have uh, the funding for after school programs. And in terms of corporate sponsor sponsorship, one thing I could suggest if you are willing to look into it is that um, when developers come into the city and want to build either residential or commercial, the city council and the planning commission actually can, uh, as part of the package for uh, approval, can ask the developer who usually has a financial uh, foundation to provide some type of benefits for the community. You could ask for a green, you could ask for green space, you could ask for many things, and you could also ask for a, uh, a community center or at least fund part of the community center. Those are all the options that the city council, a city council has. So um, if you really want to look into it and be an advocate for, for the youth, that's something where you could kind of speak at the city councils. Okay, I, w I will love. Yeah. I would love to do that. Uh, maybe in the future, you know, I would love to speak before the city council and um, Alhambra and I could probably give uh, a few suggestions or, or a few ideas because I think, it, I think it's very, very important. Right, right. So because you're talking about corporate sponsorship. And That's so, correct. Right. So to summarize, pro to provide our youth with, like you said, very much needed guidance and a place to uh, to play and do their homework and be tutored in a very safe environment. There's various ways to create that environment. So, yeah. so that's what I suggest. Yes. Yes, I'm. I'm definitely at a, interested in that. You know, definitely. And mm -hmm. my and my second question has to do with Hispanophobia. Uh, Hispanophobia is something that has become very rampant in the last couple of years. But for some, but 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 for some reason, uh, I don't really see Hispanophobia being addressed or spoken of. You know, as as you know, um, um, with the whole thing with um, hate crimes committed against Asians. You know, Asians are the smallest minority in America, but they have been heard of on the news, and people are taking awareness of what's going on with them, with you know, racism, et cetera. But when it comes to Hispanic people. For some, for some reason, it's like when something happens with the Hispanic community, like in terms of hate crimes, et cetera, people don't really hear about it. And one of the things that I'm doing is that I'm trying to lobby to get uh, minority protections for Hispanics, because Hispanics are the only uh, group in America that don't have minority protections, you know, as uh, African Americans, uh, Jewish people, uh, you know, LGBT people, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to lobby to get hate crimes um, laws enacted to protect our people because, you know, every time we uh, hear on the news that a vendor is, is attacked, you know, by, you know, mm. by, some, by somebody, it's like they don't really treat it as a hate crime. They just treat it as an act of vandalism. And mm -hmm. that's something of, of, um, of concern. And I believe that uh, Hispanophobia, you know, really needs to be addressed. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that the Asian community can can do is partner like with Spanish United, like with my organization, to try to work together in combating uh, Hispanophobia. At the same time, uh, we can work together in addressing um, Asian hate, you know, anti-Asian sentiment, because both groups are being attacked in, in different ways. And I, and I, and I believe that, um, you know, to to get uh, awareness to to be done, uh, we need to we need to speak about these things, and I think it's very, very important. You know, because when people don't speak, you know, no nobody knows what's going on and falls on 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 deaf ear. So how mm -hmm. how would you uh, address the issue of Hispanophobia and how the Asian community can do their part in in combating it? 
Right, understand. Uh, it's very unfortunate these uh, these crimes or uh, behaviors happen. I we've seen it on the uh, news and read in the newspaper and so on and so forth for both uh, races, uh, Chinese, Asian Americans as well as Hispanics. What I could offer is that number one, uh, we recently had uh, several marches uh, in the San Gabriel Valley, um, one starting Alhambra, one starting San Gabriel, and actually one starting El Monte. And uh, it was very, very wonderful to see that um, the Asian Americans as well as the Hispanics were together in those marches and also African Americans as well and some whites. So that's it, I think, on one level, uh, we can, you know, actually work together and do very, uh, have start some very peaceful marches or having banners um, that are very much uh, uh, positive um, to to accepting all race, all cultures, mm -hmm. and those are the, the 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 basic level of based on our speech, our action, really working together. And it'll, it'll show in the city as we march, as we having maybe an event together, bring all uh, the Hispanics, the Asian Americans, the, the whites and the African Americans and all races together from that city. So that will be the action of either, uh, usually the city council doesn't get involved with uh, the, these uh, peaceful demonstrations or marches, it will take someone to organize that. Perhaps you could do that, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and you could connect with the leaders of uh, Asian Americans. Um, I could try to email you some of the groups I think could be helpful for the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. So, um, and during those marches, the city council members were attending as well. So that really helped the residents to understand that the city leaders are also involved and very much. Uh, interested in making sure that there's harmony in the cities. And uh, on another level in terms of hate crimes in general, it's very unfortunate um, that happens. One thing I would like to say is that it is the, it really is the individual behavior, not the entire race. Mm -hmm. And I've said that to another reporter, um, what we see on uh, TV or newspaper, uh, people who commit hate crimes really is that individual's choice. It, mm -hmm. it does not reflect the entire race. So I think that's really important point to point out. And I'm sure many people understand that um, as we have neighbors who are very diverse population, like on my block, I mean, I have, you know, different races, uh, different culture represented on my block. So neighbors know that these are just individual behavior uh, that who choose to commit hate crimes. So, but we certainly could help to um, support each other. So um, at a higher level in terms of hate crimes, because it is a crime. So I look towards LA County um, who is right now having changes because the, the new district attorney who made changes to enhancement. And one of the things I was very concerned about is that he, uh, at first, when he first got sworn in, he removed all enhancements, including hate crimes. Oh, really? So it was, all, yes, yeah, you can look into that, uh, George Gascon. And so it was under his umbrella of reform, criminal justice reform. So he just across the board removed all enhancements, including hate crime enhancement. And so later on, he changed a little bit after the LGBTQ group talked to him under pressure, he he bring he brought back the enhancement of hate crime, but only under very special circumstances, and it was not defined. So I don't know what special circumstances of hate crime does it take for enhancement to be considered. Um, so if you want to look into that that's a higher level where the county justice system right now is not exactly um, helping with um, putting out deterrent for hate crimes because the consequence is not there or right. the consequence of hate crime is very weak. And that is something I had looked into and I wrote a letter to him uh, uh, re addressing the policy change. And it doesn't help in this, in this climate, it really doesn't help. 
it sends a very weak message to those who choose to commit hate crimes. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, when when people when people do these things, it's like you know they'll only be charged, let's say, with assault, but they'll get less time. You know, when you have these uh, uh, hate crime and en en enactments, it it gives them more time in addition to whatever they they did. So I think that is something of concern and. That is something that I'm definitely gonna look into. I was not I was not aware, um, aware of that because that's because that's what I'm trying to do with my organization. Because mm -hmm. I just feel that since Hispanics they're not defined as a race, they're defined as an ethnicity. You know, Hispanic could be of any race. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes it's hard to uh, uh, prosecute people that do uh, crimes against Hispanic people because you don't know what they are. You know ethnic wise. So I think it's very important that a hate crime definition gets defined by by national origin in addition to race because you know mm -hmm. it, you know it's getting it's getting out of uh, control. Like, you know, I I speak with uh, different people that you know that have gone through these similar sit situations and in many circumstances the perpetrator that does the harm to them you know, sometimes they serve little to no jail time or, you know, they don't get prosecuted for doing a hate crime. They get prosecuted, let's say, for a mugging or, you mm -hmm. know, that type of Correct. thing. But, but yeah, that's something yeah. that's, that's of, of concern. Right. And I think because since we're talking about crime, it's not, it's something of a more serious level. Um, for example, uh, I think a few months ago when there was the, uh, uh, march against the uh, anti-Asian hate crime march happened, mm -hmm. I think, in another city. There was a driver who chose blatantly drove into the crowd. Fortunately, no one was hurt. But and and the person, the driver actually has said uh, racial remarks. So it was very, very clearly of uh, racially motivated, even though no one was hurt. But you imagine someone using a vehicle trying to run into the crowd, that should, there should have been a charge of some sort. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, there was no charge because there was just not, no consequence attached. So there's something that where all of us who are concerned about hate crimes uh, really should look into at the county level. Uh, why is it that the consequence is so weak or there's no consequence whatsoever at this point, unless under very special circumstances. And he never defined what that uh, special circumstances is. So I do encourage you to look into it and you could probably uh, talk to the DA's office if you're interested. Uh, many councils have taken a vote of no uh, confidence um, against uh, George Gascon, district mm -hmm. attorney. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing personal against him. I don't know him, but I think his policy, his reforms are very uh, dangerous right now. Mm -hmm. It sends out uh, it sends out a message that is not something that I like, so that's what I have to offer um, at two different levels. Right, and the and the uh, and the final question uh, has to do uh, with uh, sponsorship, uh, 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 dialogue, and um, and promotion of cultural exchange between both groups. So. Uh, as as I was saying, you know, I'm looking for sponsorships to do these, you know, different projects with Spanish United, and mm -hmm. uh, how and how would you how would you uh, how would you uh, define uh, or to encourage uh, dialogue and cultural exchange between both Hispanics and you know Chinese and Asian people? Okay, so you talk about two things. You talk about sponsorship. Are you looking at uh, financial sponsorship? Or? That's correct. That's correct. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the, another question will be how would how we promote the dialogue and exchange? Okay. Yes. So um, I I personally, as vice mayor and mayor, I have looked into this area of um, asking the local corporations who have been doing pretty well to donate, for example. Um, so I have asked, uh, as, a vi as the vice mayor, I've asked our local BMW dealership to contribute to our local food drive, for example. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, the local food drive was actually uh, part of the Alhambra Teacher Association nonprofit that started it. And so, and I think 
and that's a small example of sponsorship financially to help uh, support a very uh, good cause. And so it would take people that will uh, either uh, visit the local corporations and talking to the managers. And another, another example was, you know, many, actually many large corporations have been doing fairly well, even during COVID. And so all it takes is someone going in and uh, talk to the manager about needing corporate sponsorship uh, financially in this situation to, for a good cause. So another example is just recently, and I'm very excited that I got our local big five store to donate sports shoes to uh, young army recruits who graduated from our local Alhambra High School and Modern, high, Modern Park High School. So that it just simply, I just walk in the store, of course, being the mayor, it certainly helped. Mm -hmm. And I just talked mm -hmm. about, you know, just wanting to give those young people a pair of free pair of shoes from the store and they gladly accepted it. And they, they've been doing that for our local baseball leagues. So it's there. It's just that it takes, uh, it's a matter of taking people to go in and ask or, or email the corporations or finding the connection. Once you establish that initial connection, and I'm sure that many large corporations are very willing to continue that sponsorship year after year. So that's from my personal experience. I've never done that before, before I became the city council member, but I realize the doors are open. It's just a matter of us walking to the open door. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, many of us think that corporations are not willing to help, but they are willing to help. And so I encourage you to um, look on that, that path. And I think that you'll have some uh, positive results. And so that's a financial uh, sponsorship uh, at that level. As far as co cooperation uh, among the uh, across the, the cultural uh, the the different groups, and the city obviously can do many things. We are trying to uh, on our strategic plan for this coming year. We are one of the items we are looking to is get to know you, get to know your neighbor program. So it could be a block party or it could be uh, like an event that we set up on the, on the streets um, mm -hmm. that all, name, all residents are invited. So when, you, when all residents are invited to a public event sponsored by the city, free of charge normally, then it, it produces a very casual, friendly, safe environment for people to start having a discussion. And uh, especially when there's food or music involved, it's a very, it's a wonderful environment. And so people got to know each other. I mean, many times, even as the mayor, I've lived here for uh, since 1978 in Alhambra, there are so many people have, have never met. And it's amazing. They could be down the block from, mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just takes, um, takes the city and, and, um, and the efforts of individual neighbors to have a block party to organize something and you invite all the neighbors coming out. And I recently attended several resident uh, events over some issues and I, they've lived in my neighborhood for many years and many of us have never met each other. Mm -hmm. So we're all kind of in our own house, you know, minding our own business, but all you do is just step out and start helping your neighbors. And when you see neighbor, you know, watering the lawn, you say hi. And so I, to me, my main message is to start at the grassroots level, individual level, uh, help your neighbors, be respectful and uh, watch out for your neighbors, you know, to do, help you, especially help your elderly neighbors. They really appreciate that. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's, so, that's definitely something that I'm doing. You know, I'm also trying to reach out to elderly Hispanic people that are mm, pretty much home, yeah. home alone and, you know, their children wonderful, have, to be home, have to be out all the time. So that's one thing that I want to do is also reach out to the elderly Hispanic people as well. Absolutely. Uh, that's a wonderful start. And because, because to me, it really starts at the individual level. Like I mentioned before, starts at the school level when, when, uh, for the youth. So in, still in their mind, we're all individuals, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we're all need the same thing. All our needs are the same way, except our languages are different. Um, some of us are bilingual, so I encourage the bilingualism at mm -hmm. school. 
I sometimes find, hey, who are who's a bilingual or trilingual? Right. And just be proud of that. Be, uh, and so, uh, as we know, we have many immigrants in the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is something that uh, educators, um, as a teacher, I, I really emphasize the importance of keeping your culture, keeping your language, even though you're an immigrant, you're learning English, but don't forget about your, your roots, your exactly. Your culture. Yeah. And so I think if we all work together, uh, even at the city, as city leaders and as residents and as advocates, like you say, I think we could really make a lot of uh, strides in this area of cooperation. I agree with you. And that's one thing that Spanish United does is that not only are we are a civil rights organization, but we're also promoting uh, pride and also preserving um, our, our traditions and customs because Hispanics out of all uh, ethnic groups are being uh, being put under a lot of pressure to assimilate and, and to give up their language and give up their culture and, and because they believe because a lot of uh, spect um, both on the left and the right spectrum uh, are conditioning Hispanic people especially immigrants that if, if you want to reach the American dream you have to give up your I, I identity and I think it's counter counterproductive because you know when when people lose their I identity you know their 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 morals and and their and their values and customs they just dis disappear and they have no identity and I think that also contributes a lot to uh, to social and moral decay and also to juvenile de delinquency I believe that if uh, Hispanic ch children especially those that are as assimilated learn learn spanish and and they could take classes for for free like in the community center i would like to do i think it's also beneficial and i also believe that if both um hispanics and asians could learn each other's language let's say like uh Chi mm -hmm. chinese can teach hispanics uh chinese mm -hmm. and hispanics can teach chinese spanish i think that would be mutual beneficial not only in a cultural level level but also in a uh in a business level i've been i've been to taiwan many years ago and i and oh I was, wonderful i i loved it i had a very good time and the little chinese that i know was able to get by and uh, <laughs> i be, i believe that there's a lot of business potential between both groups but i think if both groups can learn each other's languages i definitely think it could also establish a better business relationship and also on an equal equal footing yeah, I, I I perfectly agree with you. And in fact, um, in this day and age, and especially in United States, uh, one way to to um, to get a job to open the door is if you're bilingual. And mm -hmm. so you know, uh, it's unfortunate that um, some some are are uh, immigrants. Um, you know, like for example, I immigrate here, you know, very young, but fortunately, I kept. I was able to continue to speak Mandarin to my parents. That's how I kept my Chinese. My husband doesn't speak any Chinese. So have I not practiced with my parents, I would have lost my, my ability to speak Chinese. So I would regret it now because it, came in, it really comes in handy now as the mayor because we have many residents who are immigrants who speak Chinese. And so I'm able to use my Chinese to communicate with them because many of them do not have access to the city services because of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine the same thing for Hispanics who are immigrants. Um, as a teacher, we, I, I, took, um, I took a Spanish class, a basic Spanish class. I really enjoyed it. We, we actually watched the uh, soap operas in Spanish mm -hmm. to learn about the culture and the language. And we took a, a trip down to uh, the border with our professor and so these are things I definitely agree with you. If everyone can pick up a second language and uh, start to communicate, you know, even with our best basic level, I think that will be another big step in terms of cooperation, and understanding of each other. So I, I do encourage that. In fact, I wanted to uh, encourage that the elementary school have uh, classes that are uh, the, uh, of a different language for students to take as electives. Right now, it's only offered and required at the high school and college level, but I think it really should start at the uh, younger level as well, because that is the age when you could pick up a second language. Oh, absolutely, because the older you yeah. are, the harder it is to pick up another language. It is harder. 
absolutely. But I think that's another way through language, through food, through arts and music, can people really enjoy each other, uh, enjoy the diversity that we have and celebrate it. And that's why I stayed in Alhambra and I you know, uh, want to do something uh, for Alhambra as well as San Gabriel Valley. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. The language is, is also another bridge uh, to, to bridge the gap for, for, for that matter. Excellent. Uh, we just uh, are at the end of our time. I want to thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I truly appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. And uh, please email me that information about the sponsorship and funding and all that. And uh, as soon as I'm done with the podcast, I will, I will send you, I will send you the, the link. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be on the show. Uh, and good luck. You too. Xie 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 xie. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Have a wonderful <laughs> afternoon. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.